Hello, fourth grade. Welcome to week eight. Can you believe it? We are on week eight of this quarantine. Um, we are gonna make today's video as quick as possible. So I have some exciting news for you guys. We're gonna go over the packet and, um, and then we'll say goodbye until next week. Um, so the first thing we're gonna start with is I'm gonna catch you up with me. So this week I was at the school again, passing out technology. Today was our last day. I saw so many of you and it made my entire week. I'm so sad that it's done and I don't have to be there anymore because it was such a great excuse to see you guys. Um, so what I have planned for this weekend, that's kind of thought, I kind of thought that's what I was going to share. Um, Sunday is Mother's Day. I hope you guys have great things planned for your grandmothers, your stepmoms. I give my aunt a Mother's Day present because she's always been like a mother to me. Um, whoever that mother figure is, I hope you cook them some breakfast, bring them some nice coffee in bed and treat them like queens and princesses like they deserve. Um, I'm going to see my niece this weekend and I'm gonna surprise my mom. Shh. So I'm bringing her a bunch of books. So they are um, just fun picture books. Some of them are a little bit heavy, text heavy. Um, I thought this was a really cool Wizard of Oz book because um, most of you probably haven't even seen the movie. It's very old. Um, so this book's a little more modern looking. And then one of my all time favorite books I'm going to bring her and read with her is The Velveteen Rabbit. I challenge you guys to get this and read it if you um, can. It's so good. All right. So Yes, or excuse me, um, last week's winners. So we had two challenge questions. The first challenge question was, what is another example of functional text? Um, and any of those, you could have used any examples. Um, so our winner for that is Rylan Dix, and she said a schedule. Rylan, you are absolutely correct. A schedule is functional text. We make schedules to help us function on events, occasions, everyday life. So that is absolutely a functional text. She is the only one that got that question right. So great job, Rylan. Um, second question. What sport would I have made a schedule for? I said, hint, it's what I played in college. My uniform's actually behind me. Um, and Zaid a turban, you got that right. It was lacrosse, all right? So our week seven winners, Rylan and Zaid. Good job, guys. All right, we are gonna move right into going over our week eight work from our packet. So for Monday, you had to read jump, 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 visualize it. This was pretty hefty reading, okay? It was written in the form of a poem. Um, and I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, you had to draw a picture of at least three important events, okay? So if you have already gone to my Google Classroom, awesome. If you have not, go now and look up the key that I've posted for this week. The answers to that are in the key. I did not draw the events, but I will tell you what I would have drawn if I did. Um, the three events that I would have drawn would have been a door frame with Tom and Ryan looking up, wanting to reach it because they were trying to jump to it. I would have drawn Tom trying to jump by himself to reach the door frame, and he does not make it by himself. And then I would have drawn Tom and Ryan working together to boost each other up to touch that door frame, and they are successful. Another question for day one was what is the theme? A theme is the heart of the story, okay? It's the lesson we learn. The lesson that I took away was that you can accomplish a lot more together than alone. Would Tom and Ryan have been able to reach the top of the door frame without each other? No, they would not, okay? I think this because one of the boys realized that they can work together and reach the door frame. Not alone though, all right? So, um, you also, for your short answer, had to write a paragraph about the conflict, which is problem, and the resolution, which is the solution, in this story, okay? You had to include details. I'm not going to give you the answer to that. You may happily send it to me over my email, which is in the answer key. Day two, Tuesday, you had to read Grown Up, which is the poem on this side, okay? 
and you had to answer the multiple choice questions. I am gonna go through and just read you the answers. If you would like to understand my thought process, look at the key, I have typed it all out. So the first question of this um, was that you had to make text annotations. You should have used this page as a model for how to do the text annotations. And you should have drawn them along with each stanza. Then you had two questions to answer. The first one is asking you for the central idea. I want you to think about what skill we're looking for. A central idea, what does that sound like? What the story is mostly about. And mostly about equals main idea. So the main idea of the poem is to show, and the correct answer was C, how tough growing up can be. The second question you had to answer was, by the end, how do you think the child feels about growing up? Okay, a light bulb should be going off. How do you think? When we are asking ourselves, how do we think? That is a drawing conclusions question. You need your background knowledge plus what the text has in it, the evidence to draw a conclusion. So the answer for by the end, how do you think the child feels about growing up was a little sad. At the very end of the poem, they state, I don't always like being grown up. So they sound a little bit sad about having to grow up and not use their imagination as much. Then you were challenged in your short answer to write a poem about growing up. You in could include what you could do at age four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'm not gonna give you that answer, but if you wanna share one with me, you may absolutely, and please um, email it to my email that's listed in the key. We're moving to day three, which is Wednesday. You had to read The Magic Glasses. Think about the author's clues while reading. Find the sentences to conclude that Violet hated her old glasses. So I personally love this story. I thought it was very cute and relatable. Long, but cute and relatable. So um, you ha the sentence that I was able to tell by the author leaving a clue that Violet did not like her glasses, guess what it was, guys? It was in this and it says, Violet hated her glasses. Does that tell you that she didn't like them? It says it right there for you to see. You also had to write three more conclusions that you could pull from the author's clues. And you were supposed to put them in a graphic organizer. I have written out three conclusions that I used. I stated what the text said for each. I put what I know from my background knowledge for each. And then I put my conclusions that I made using those things. You may look at my key posted in Google Classroom for those answers. Then we had day four of Thursday. You had to reread because good readers, too bad I can't hear you. I hope you're screaming at the computer, reread. Um, and then answer the three comprehension questions below the story. Again, I'm just gonna walk you through the questions and the answer. If you would like to see my thought process, please go ahead and look at the Google Classroom answer key that I've posted. The first question, Violet visits the eye doctor after her glasses break. What happens when she visits the eye doctor? I want you thinking about what kind of question this is. If the answer is found directly in the text, that means it is a details question. The answer to that is she gets a new pair of glasses. Yes, she gets a new pair of glasses, her vision has gotten worse and she needs new ones. That is D. Number two, when, the story, when in the story does Violet want to wear her glasses? Think about what kind of question this is. The answer is found directly in the text, so it is a details question. Go back to the text, reread, because good readers reread, and the correct answer was C at the end of the story. After she gets her new glasses and realizes that they have magical powers, she wants to wear them. All right, number three. How does Violet feel about her glasses at the end of the story? Think about what kind of question this is. Again, the answer is found directly in the text, so it is a details question. You have to go reread, cause good readers reread. The correct answer for this one is she feels excited. 
she likes her new glasses because she realizes that they have magical powers. That is answer choice B. Please go and review why I did not choose the other answer choices in all three of those questions so you can fully understand my thought process and I hope yours was similar. Then you had to write a summary for this entire story, the magic glasses. You needed to include a beginning, a middle, and an end. You had to also include the conflict and the resolution. I wonder if um, any of you can remember what all of those events are called. What are they part of? The story's what? Okay, think about that. At the beginning of the story, Violet drops her glasses on the floor at the school and they break, causing her classmates to begin to make fun of her. So she goes home and tells her mom, I want you to go and read what I wrote for my summary for the middle and then the end. I'm only gonna read you the beginning, which is what I just read. And last but certainly not least, day five, which was Friday, you had to read The Disappearing Room and create five questions that could be answered from reading this text. So here are my five questions that you should be able to answer after you've read this. Number one, what caused June to fall down the stairs? Number two, why couldn't June and Alejandro see when they both got down the steps? Number three, what was the bright speck in the corner of the room? Number four, what became visible when the kids could see the room? And number five, what do you, excuse me, why do you think the story is called The Disappearing Room? Okay, so your short answer for day five for Friday was June and Alejandro have a problem. The room they are in is too dark for them to see well. Rewrite the ending so it has a different outcome. I am not going to include an answer for that in the answer key. If you want to send me your rewritten ending, I would love it. Send it to my email listed in the um, key. All right, we went through that really fast. Um, so how we're going to end this video this week? Challenge questions, all right? Here is my first challenge question, all right? What do we call the events in the story? So that means the beginning, the middle, the end, the setting, the conflict, the resolution, those are all part of what? The story's what? The story's blank. You need to tell me what that blank is. Comment on this YouTube link or comment in Google Classroom. You can also have your parents text me the answer or email me the answer. And I have a second one. This week was Cinco de Mayo, May 5th. What does it celebrate? Mm. You may do research on this, you may Google it, whatever. Get your answers to me commenting by commenting on this YouTube, by commenting in my Google Classroom, by emailing me, by having your parents text me, however. Um, and then next week, I'm starting something new. The first two correct answers, the first two correct answers will get a shout out in my video and a prize delivered to their house by me. That's right, I'm going to drive to the two winners' houses next week and deliver you a prize. Two first ones after that, they'll just be shout outs. See you guys next week. Bye.